we believe that God actually loves the whole world and has invited us to partner with him in bringing his love and his kingdom. Whether here in Springfield or somewhere else around the world, our cry is, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven through us. Church, this is our mission. Hope for the world. Hope for today, tomorrow, and eternity. That's what our friends at Bright Hope give to kids and families in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Bright Hope's team and partners provide care and education for poor and orphan children. They equip youth through trade schools and serve as a distribution agency for medical and relief supplies, all in the name of Jesus. Pray that Bright Hope's team will continue to have favor in their nation and that God will make their efforts successful. When you give to Missions at Hope, you support Bright Hope's team. Hi Hope Church, I'm Tiffany Applegate with James Project in Guatemala. With your help, we provide for the needs of abandoned, abused, and trafficked women and children. Though 2020 was definitely a different year, with your support, we saw some great things happen. A safe refuge was provided for over 100 kids. Women were supported and educated even in the midst of the pandemic. And many women and children came to know the Lord and were baptized during year 2020. And as great as all that was, we know what God has ahead of us is even better. Next month, we're officially going to open our Casa Maria, our teen pregnancy home, and we're praying that with the help of God, we'll be able to open up another home before the end of the year. That means we'll be able to have 24 more children in our care that are, are desperately in need of help by the end of the year. Our Redeemed Women's Program is growing and has wonderful new things ahead, as does our school and our sustainability plan. We thank you so much for your partnership, and we give glory to God for all that's happening through the James Project. God bless you all. Meeting the needs of the lost and broken. That's what our friends at Mongaza International are doing for families in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mongaza International's team and partners provide sustainability programs, orphan care, leadership training, and Bible distribution to children and their families. Hi, Hope Church. My name is Trezor with Mongaza International. We make Jesus famous in the slums of the Democratic Republic of Congo by combining tangible projects. We want to make sure that the people we reach out to have what they need in their daily lives, but also, and most importantly, that they get to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Thank you so much for being part of our story and for changing lives here in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Pray that Mangaza International's team will continue to have favor in their nation. When you give to Missions at Hope, who support the Mongaza International team. Shalom Hope Church. We are Patrick and Rebecca Verbaten, and we are serving here in Jerusalem, Israel with Bridges for Peace. We've been serving here now for just over seven years, and that entire time, Hope, you have been faithful to give monthly so that we can continue to serve here. So we want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. But we also want to give you a glimpse into what your financial support has sowed into over the past seven years. If you look around here where we're serving, you'll see that we have lots of food and we're giving out a lot of food to people all over the nation, all the way from the north to the south of Israel. And a lot of the people that we're helping are Holocaust survivors, widows and orphans, and families who have just immigrated to Israel in accordance to God's prophetic word. And so we consider it a great privilege and a great honor to reach out to this nation and give people the food and the help and assistance that they need. But you see, when we go to the people, we're bringing a lot more than just food and assistance. We're bringing hope. We're bringing hope and we're bringing the love of the Messiah to each and every place that we go. Freedom at all costs. That's what our friends at AIM give to trafficked victims in Cambodia. 
AIMS team and partners rescue sex trafficking victims and give girls education and training so they can become self-sustaining. Hello, Hope Church. I'm Pam. I am Sokna. Uh, we are with Agape International Mission in Cambodia. AIM takes a holistic approach to fight the evil of human trafficking. We work to prevent trafficking and rescue those who have been trafficked. And help uh, to restore and reintegrate them into the happier and healthier life. Everything we do is because God Agape love. Thank you so much for your part in this fight. Pray that AIMS team will continue to have favor in Cambodia and begin to take ground in Belize as well. When you give to Missions at Hope, you support AIMS team. Compassionate and confidential services at no cost. That's what our friends at Pregnancy Care Center are doing for men and women struggling with the reality of an unplanned pregnancy. Pregnancy Care Center provides pregnancy testing, ultrasounds, coaching, and healthy pregnancy education. Hi, Hope family. I just want to say thank you for supporting the Pregnancy Care Center. You have made an impact in the Springfield community because you have been a partner with PCC for over 20 years since the year we were founded in 2000. Last year alone, we served over 1,300 clients. That's expectant moms and fathers of the baby who have come to PCC feeling afraid and overwhelmed. Many are thinking abortion is their only option. But when they come to Pregnancy Care Center, they see love, support, and compassion, and no judgment from our team, because you know what? A lot of our team have been there. They've experienced unplanned pregnancy, many are post-abortive, and it's an opportunity for them to say, you know what, you can do this. We're here to support you. So thank you for being a vital part of bringing life and hope to the Springfield community. We're so grateful for you. Pray that Pregnancy Care Center's team will continually be equipped to provide resources and support needed for families in our community. When you give to Missions at Hope, you support the Pregnancy Care Center team. Hello, Hope family. This is Dana and I am with Dogwood Ranch and I'm so excited that I get to tell you a little bit about what we do out at the ranch. Many years ago, the Lord put such a heart and passion in us for foster youth and uh, children in our community. And out of that has come a couple of programs that we've been able to open over the last several years out at the ranch. One of the programs that is near and dear to my heart is called Healing Reigns and that is our equine therapy program. And we primarily serve foster children and youth through that program but we also are able to serve a handful of military families and veterans every year which is such an honor for us last year we also were able to open up two cabins at the ranch called the Haven and the Haven provides safe housing for former foster youth who are in crisis. So those that are homeless or on the streets needing a safe place to come, we have been blessed to be able to provide housing and mentorship and all around support for them. Hope we could not do what we do every day without you and we are so thankful for you. Empowering change in communities through relief, rehabilitation, and development. That's what our friends at iPoor Life are doing for older, foster, and at-risk youth. iPoor Life's team provides coaching and group gatherings to assist at-risk youth in furthering their education and learning to sustain themselves. I'm Aaliyah with iPoor Life, and I'm super excited to be able to be here today to thank you for your generous support and share a little bit about what we do. IPOR Life is committed to seeing positive change in the most at-risk and underserved communities. We coach individuals in social isolation, helping them to identify their strengths, build social capital, 
and put their strengths into action, moving them from dependency to self-sufficiency. I for Life believes that when you invest in one, the entire community benefits. Thank you for investing in your community and helping us get the tools into the hands of those who desperately need it. Pray that iPoor Life's team will continue to expand, opening new locations throughout the United States, and that God would break the cycle of homelessness in our youth. When you give to Missions at Hope, you support the iPoor Life team. Just, just a second, I would love for us to just give a round of applause to the Lord Jesus for all of our missionaries and leaders. Come on. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise for all of this. Yeah. So amazing. How many of you this morning learned a couple of new things about where we're supporting? Okay, I figure that most of us would not have a clue of all the places that God is using hope. And uh, man, I'm so excited about all of it. How many are pumped about this day, Mission Sunday? It's good, yeah. I wanna honor a couple of local leaders that we have here today in the room. We have the founder and CEO of I Poor Life, Julie Higgins and her husband. Would you guys stand to this morning? We just wanna recognize them real quick. Yeah, come on. So pumped about having y'all. Thank you. And I don't know that Brian and Dana Lopez, but our very own Brian and Dana, as you saw Dana every week up here, they were up there with Dogwood Ranch. They're a part of, part of our church. And also our very own Danae Faye, who's a part of the Pregnancy Care Center here in Springfield. Danae, where are you? Come on, you gotta stand up too. Let's give Danae a round of applause. <clears throat> One really cool thing, she mentioned that Hope has been supporting uh, Pregnancy Care Center for just over 20 years, and I checked, and we have been able to give over $105,000 to Pregnancy Care Center. Such a, such a beautiful thing. Well, I want to reiterate what, uh, what Chris said earlier. I encourage you when you're leaving today to go down that hallway, down the Family Center hallway, and check out the missions wall. Um, it, it's quite a stretch of, of missions, but it also is some extra space where we can continue to add missions, uh, missionaries and missions that we're supporting. But um, we're so excited about today being Mission Sunday. But here's what I'd love to say about this, is that today isn't about just one day with a missions emphasis. Today is actually a launching into new territory as a church. Today is about moving into new places as God's kingdom expands all over the world, and it's about us joining him with what he's doing in the nations of the earth. You know, being a non-denominational church, um, we don't have just, uh, we don't have the denominational global missions program to fall back on. And that's why I think today is so important because um, we, we don't have that denominational thing to fall back on. Today is important that we are building and growing a missions outreach for the next generation. That our children grow up realizing that the world is a really big place. And that it isn't just here, but that the generations to come will grow up, that we raise them up with a passion for local and global missions, that we raise them up with the reality that God actually loves the whole world. That he actually loves the entire world and that we have a part to play in it. You know, one of the central parts um, and focuses of our, our mission and our vision at Hope is that we would grow a missional, spirit-filled family that provides a living demonstration of the kingdom of God, whether that's here in Springfield or whether that's somewhere else around the world that we're doing what Jesus would do if he were us. How many want to be a part of that today? I do too. You know, missions is has really been so central to our church from its very inception with Pastor Gary as our founding pastor. It was in his heart from day one. He's gonna share a couple of things in a little bit. But when I stepped into the role of lead pastor a little over a year and a half ago, one of the great passions that was in my heart was that we would continue to expand 
and we would continue to take new ground in global and local missions. And I remember this in the summer of 2019, we were in this room on a Wednesday night, a prayer meeting was going on, and I remember how special that night was. Um, it was one of those moments where just the Holy Spirit was so active that it was like you could just feel it dripping in the room. And I remember that night, there was such a heart for the nations released, and there were people that were being literally called to the nations of the earth in that prayer meeting. And we began to lay hands on people, and many were called to go. And that night was a night for me that I'll never forget because I, I got a picture, at least a part of the picture, I think, of what God wanted to do with our church and that we would be an apostolic sending center, that our church would literally be a place where people would come here encounter the presence and the power of Jesus, that they would be equipped and that we would send people out empowered to go, sent out in boldness in the power of the Spirit to the nations of the earth. I saw that that night, and I believe that that is what we are stepping into, that people would go out of this place full of the power of the Spirit across seas to the nations and also across streets to neighbors. It's both, isn't it? It's both, and my heart burns for us to mature in this, for us to become more and more a church where the Great Commission really is the mission. Where the Great Commission really is the centerpiece of our mission. I wanna read out of Matthew 28. If you have your Bibles, you can open them up. After his death and his resurrection, Jesus, he came to the disciples, and he said this in verse 18 of Matthew 28. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Now, when you think about that statement, it's really quite astounding, isn't it? Jesus is declaring that he's been given all authority in heaven and on earth. How many think that right now in the season that we've just walked through, it might be actually really good for us to take regular time meditating on that? that Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And I think one of the most important results of his resurrection is that Jesus is ruling the world. That he's the king of the world and he's ruling the world. But as we know, the world is not completely as Jesus intends for it to be. That could be the understatement of the year, <laughs> right? I was reading N.T. Wright, who's one of the most premier New Testament theologians, and he says, that, he says it like this. He says, Jesus is working to take the world from where it was under the rule not only of death, but of corruption, greed, and every kind of wickedness, and to bring it under the rule of his life-giving love. How is he doing it? Here's the shocker. You ready for it? He's doing it through us. He's doing it through you. He's doing it through me, through his followers. I want you to take a minute, turn to somebody and say, he's doing it through you. Come on. Turn to the person on the other side, say, you are the plan. You are the plan. <laughs> You're the plan. But here's the truth. His plan is, this new creation project that he started in his resurrection, it only goes forward in so far as the agents of Jesus, meaning you and me, take it forward. That it only goes forward as people that he's commissioned, kingdom people, believers, respond to his plan, respond to his commission. 
I think as you and I take it forward with him in the power of the spirit, it goes forward. And as witnesses of resurrection, how many witnesses of resurrection do we have here? If you're a believer, you're a witness of the resurrection. We are given the responsibility to go and make it real to the world around us. That we are literally a part of the answer to the prayer of Jesus on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. And I just, I, I don't have time to preach a sermon today. Everybody said amen. But, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But what I, what I do want to declare over us today, as we've just read that passage in scripture, is that Hope Church is not an audience to the Great Commission. That Hope Church is called to be an army to the Great Commission. We are not called to just watch and be bystanders. We are actually called to be participants to the Great Commission. We're not called to be spectators. We're actually called to be an army to what Jesus has called us to do. And many of us, I believe, in this room and watching online are, are already active in this, right? Some of us in this place today already know that we're called to go to certain places, maybe some far off places, long term or short term. I believe even today that God could be stirring in hearts today missions unlike ever before. I believe today God could be speaking to people about places that you're going to go with him. I believe he could actually right now, Holy Spirit could be moving in your heart about where you're gonna go. But here's the truth. Every single one of us that calls ourselves followers of Jesus is called to go. Every single one of us is called to go. Some of us are gonna go to far off places, but every single one of us is called to the places of influence that we have been given right here, right now. Every single one of us. And I think this whole, this whole year, as you've heard from us, our heart that we are, we are growing this in our church is that we are called to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And we're giving our focus this year and what that looks like and how that is expressed through the church that every believer, there are no just observers, but if you are a believer, you're called to go and to make disciples in our local context, but we are also called to be a part of discipling the nations. We're also called to be a part of discipling the nations. Some of us will be the bow that sends people. Some of us will be the arrows that actually go to far off lands, but here's the truth. We all get to be a part of it through multiple ways, and one of the primary ways is through prayer. Through prayer and intercession. You got that card when you walked in? I wanna encourage you to keep that card on your refrigerator. Keep it with you so that you can begin to pray for these missionaries that we're supporting in these ministries. We can also join in giving, right? To fund and support the arrows that are being sent out around the world. And we also can join in by taking trips and releasing the heart of God in the nations of the earth. Here's the thing that I was reminded of by one of our missionaries. He said, the Lord doesn't need Hope Church. He's chosen to include Hope Church. He doesn't actually need us, but he's invited us and he's included us and he's chosen us to be a part of what he's doing on the earth. That we've been invited to join him in what he's doing and he is after a global bride. You know, sometimes it's so easy to get co so consumed in our own little life. But I believe what God is doing right now in our church is he's awakening us that there is a global bride that is being prepared for the return of Jesus Christ. And we have an assignment here. We have a responsibility here. He's not just after an American bride. He's after a global bride. And there's much work to do. Don't misunderstand me. We have a lot of work to do and responsibility here. It's very central right here in Springfield in our area. But we must remember that there is a global bride that he is after. And I believe this is a moment for us to shift some of our focus from just ourselves to the nations of the earth. That the goodness of Jesus would be released. I was talking to one of our missionaries to Southeast Asia this past week. I won't mention his name. Um, he, he's a missionary to a closed nation, the largest nation, in fact, on the planet. You might be able to figure out what that is, um, where they literally risk their lives every day 
to reach people with the gospel. And it's a highly secret underground ministry. In fact, I, I can't even really communicate much of what he shared with me because we're live streaming and it would put them in danger. But what they do is they translate the Bible to unreached people groups who don't even have a word for God. And he was sharing with me how the kingdom is just increasing and advancing right now that they are launching to reach another five people groups that, that will, will reach another 260,000 people with the gospel of Jesus Christ who have never heard. They've never heard. And I, I was just thinking about how powerful this is that we actually get to be a part of this through our giving that we actually get to be a part of this through our praying for them, that church, you are literally reaching thousands of people who've never heard the gospel. You'll never get into these places. I'll never get into these places, but we are a part of the gospel advancing, and it's just the beginning. He was telling me this cool story. How many like cool stories? I love cool stories. Um, he was telling me about this, this factory that they have that makes fly fishing lures for Bass Pro of all places. I was like, yeah, we know Bass Pro. And uh, apparently this fishing lure that, they, that they're making, it literally uh, flies off the shelf because it sells so fast, they can't keep it, it stocked up. Um, apparently the fish really like it. Um, I think Pastor Gary probably has the lure, I don't know. Um, but Bass Pro reached out to this factory and said, we need more. So they were producing 500 a day, and they said, we want to automate your factory, meaning machines would run your factory instead of people, and we could jump to 5,000 a day instead of 500 a day. And so this, this, this automation would literally make this owner like just a ton more money, obviously, but what they, they said to Bass Pro when they reached out is they said, no, we're not gonna do that. We wanna keep the factory workers here working. And Bass Pro said, you're crazy. But what they didn't know, what Bass Pro didn't know is that this factory was really a front for a Bible school. That the Bible school students would dress up like the factory workers and walk into the factory with the workers and they would go in there, they would be trained and taught the Bible and then they would be trained to reach unreached people groups and they would go out and begin to, to begin underground churches. They're not just making fishing lures there, they're literally training fishers of men. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise for that. And so what I was thinking as he was telling me this is that little old Hope Church in the middle of Missouri, the Bible Belt, you and I get to physically get into these places and reach these people because of your giving and your praying, we get to join in in discipling nations that we could never reach on our own. We get to, I mean, think about that. Jesus said, go, discipling nations. Well, how in the world can we do that? Well, we can't physically get into those places. But guys, the, the, the funds that you're releasing are literally causing people that would never have heard the gospel and the good news of Jesus to hear. The story after story after story. When you give today or any day to Hope Church, you're gonna be reaching unreached people. Last week, uh, I didn't realize it, but I had back-to-back -back Zoom calls scheduled with two missionaries. Um, our friend Tresor in the Congo, you saw him on the screen a little bit ago. And then I had another one scheduled with Bree and Teo, who are in Rwanda. Now, Tresor in the Congo has just become so dear to my heart. He's just such a precious man and doing such an incredible work there in the Congo. You can read about it on our missions page at hopechurch.net. But um, Tresor actually watches with us each week our services. In fact, he and his team, they actually did the fast with us in January too, which is so fun. So they've been joining in with us. And then I was able to uh, talk with Teo and Bree, who are in Rwanda. Now, they were a part of our our congregation for quite a while. Um, Teo is from Rwanda, and actually when the genocide happened there, where there were 50,000 murdered, he was one of the 300 that survived. So Teo and Bree have now gone back to Rwanda, and they are making disciples. 
in that country. And they were, yeah, come on. They were sharing with me all that God is doing, talking to me about all the baptisms. They're reaching people through the radio. I mean, it's incredible what God is doing there. And so, you know, this Missouri boy, Josh Thompson, is is, the lights are coming on. And so as I'm talking, I'm like, I'm going to walk over to the map in my office and see how close is Rwanda and Congo. And I walk over there, and I'm like, they're next door neighbors. Like, I'm like, I'm talking to the nations and their neighbors, right? So I walk up there, I look, and so I asked Teo, I said, how far is Congo from you? Um, and I mentioned Tresor, and he said, it's about a five-hour drive. I'm like, you're kidding me. So in the middle of a Tuesday afternoon in Springfield, Missouri, I'm talking to the nations, and uh, it's super awesome. And um, so I, I had that great talk with, with uh, Bree and Teo, and then my next Zoom call was with Tresor, and so I told him about um, my talk with Brie and Teo, and I had no idea that they knew each other, but he said, I know him. He goes, I met him in Missouri, of all places. <laughs> I'm like, you're kidding me. This is amazing. And he starts telling me this story that, that, that Rwandans and the Congolese people don't often like each other that there are major issues between them through the war and all these other things. And so Tresor said that when he met Teo, the Lord spoke to him, and Tresor actually washed Teo's feet. (sighs) He washed his feet, and he said something so powerful to me, guys, that really just, man, it moved my heart. He said that the Lord spoke to him, and he said, this is your brother, This is your brother. And he said, Tresor said, that that's the day I stopped being Congolese and I started being a Christian. Come on. Come on. And guys, when when he said that, I just was like, wow, we could learn from this. We could grow from this. That here was a missionary in Congo, and he said, this was the day that I stopped being a Congolese, and I started being a Christian. And I just, man, my heart just opened up in that moment. I could feel it expanding, and that this is God's heart for the world. That I'm no longer just an American. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a part of a kingdom that has no end. This is the global bride of Christ. And my prayer for us, church, on this Mission Sunday is that God would enlarge our hearts for the global bride. That we would be present to the fact that one day every nation and tribe and tongue will be before him. That we will not be separated by nationalism and all of it, but that we will be before the throne of God. And my prayer is, God, give us your heart for the nations now. Give us your heart for the global bride. Expand our hearts for our city, but also for the nations, because we want to be an army to the Great Commission, bringing hope for the world. I want to tell you, this is going to be a great year. How many need a great year? (laughs) It's going to be a great year. I don't, I'm telling you, I just even say this. I don't even care what is going to go on around us. It's going to be a great year of impact. I believe that this is going to be a great year of harvest, that we are going to be a part of the greatest end time harvest that's ever been known. And we are preparing and getting ready for it. There's going to be an awakening that's happening. It's already happening, both right here in Springfield and around the globe. And I got to tell you guys, I'm so thankful for you and our church that we get to do it together. I I feel the yes in our church, that we don't want to just be about us. We want to be about reaching the nations. We want to follow what Jesus said and obey his command to go. I want to talk about a couple practical things, then we're going to pray. Um... Last year, we were able to give almost $210,000 in missions giving, which is great. But this year, um, we've prayed and we've set a goal as leadership that we want to do at least 10% of our, 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 the giving that comes in. We want to give it to missions. So our goal this year is at least $275,000 to missions. I, even as I say that number, I don't know, there's something in me that just believes that we're going to be able to, like, far surpass that. Really. And, I, and that's not just, like, preacher talk. I just, I, 
I hope I don't do preacher talk, but I, I, feel, I feel that in my heart that, that there's going to be an even greater measure that we're going to be able to do in the nations. But in just a little bit, um, we're going to take up an offering today that is going to go completely for local and global missions, um, special projects um, around the world. Uh, it's going to be a, we're going to, the, the dollars will be a part of seeing uh, people freed from slavery. Um, it'll go to t sending teams from hope to the nations. This is something that's really big in my heart is that we would be able to send teams from this place all over the nations, that we would help that. Feeding the hungry, helping orphans, your giving today is gonna go to spreading the gospel. And this is above and beyond your normal tithes and offerings. And so today... Um, when we do come to that moment of giving, we're gonna stand in a little bit and we're gonna, we're gonna do some praying together. Um, we'll open up whenever you feel it. If you, if you wanna come to one of the boxes, you can give. Certainly online, as you have been doing on the Hope Church app, you can give. Um, and on the tab there, you'll just click on missions, okay? Don't do it to the general, do it to missions. And every cent will go towards missions. Amen? That's good. Um, practically, one of the things that we are opening up is uh, trips where people can join uh, teams and go to the different nations. If you go on hopechurch.net, you can see on there some of the, the trips that are planned. Some of them are a little up in the air with the COVID. We're kind of just waiting for some of that more to open up. But there are some trips this year and certainly more trips going to be next year. If you're interested in a trip, go on the Hope site and, and click on that. I dream of the day where we're sending teams out all the time. All the time all the time where they're going to share the love and the power of Jesus. The other thing I wanna mention is that this past year we put together a missions team that is uh, going to represent each of the continents and the nations that we're reaching as a church. We're calling these people ambassadors because they're literally gonna be ambassadors from hope to grow relationships with these missionaries and these ministries to keep us closely connected. So the next time you hear about missions won't be next year at Mission Sunday, you're gonna hear about it regularly. So we're gonna be able to continue to connect and so this team is gonna be really important to that. And uh, in fact, I'm gonna invite the worship, to, actually let's all just stand together this morning and I'm gonna invite that team to come up here with me this morning. Um, I'm going to introduce them. They don't really need an introduction, but of course, Pastor Gary. Let's give Pastor Gary a hand. Uh, Jim and Lorna Batten, Andy and Shree Whaley, and um, they are our team that are going to stand in this place representing all of the nations where we can connect and we can bring leadership here in our church in order for us to really connect. And so I'm going to have to ask Pastor Gary just to share for a minute or two. Did you see how we got the dress code right today? <laughs> we did. Hey, you know, I was uh, sitting there thinking, you know, this church has been such a missions-oriented church. Whether you knew it or not, your giving over the years has been amazing. Uh, in the book of Acts, Apostle Paul was starting his ministry, and, and he was making impact such that they wanted to kill him. And one night they found that there was a plot undertaken to kill the man in the next 24 hours. But a group of people brought what they had. One guy had a basket, somebody else had a rope, and they let Paul over the wall. But do you know something? All that Paul accomplished in his life was predicated on the guy with the basket and the guy with the rope and the men with the willingness to risk their own lives to let the man down over the wall. They facilitated his future. That's what our giving does. I'm a, I'm a wash this morning with memories. Two weeks after I arrived in Springfield to start this church, I was in Saudi Arabia ministry. Six months later, I was in Ukraine as they won their freedom and we were ministering there. And every time uh, opportunity has come, this church has punched above its weight. Even a small church, you started to do things that, that entered in behind the palace walls. We became frequent visitors in the palace in, in Addis Ababa. 
One time, not too many years ago, the president of Ethiopia came on a state visit, the first one that ever happened in Springfield, Missouri, came on a state visit, sat on this platform in a chair, and unbeknownst to us, received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. At almost 90 years of age, he went back home and gave the first hour of his day every day to studying the Bible and seeking God. You know why? Because you'd been feeding the children in his city, in his country. You know why? Because you sent containers and containers and containers of food and clothing and hospital equipment. You res resupplied a hospital that couldn't serve their people. And the story of your good works made it into the palace wall. And we were invited there on many occasions. And finally, he came to visit us just to say thank you to you. It wasn't too long after that, that that in Zimbabwe, they had a crisis of cholera. And the, and the government made one call to Pastor Tom Duchel. And he made one call to us. And between the two of us, we provided the workers, the staff, and the prayer, plus the drugs to literally stop that, that epidemic, which had already taken 1,300 lives. It stopped it cold. You know what? You held the rope. You sent the funds, and God did the work. And we, I could go on for half a day today telling you stories of the things you've accomplished and the multiples of, of containers you've sent. Every, I, I've seen giving done, but the thing that has, has really encouraged me over the years is that every time we laid out a need to you that would touch those kind of lives, you gave beyond my expectations. Over and above what I could even imagine coming out of this congregation, you've punched above your weight and you've made a difference in the world. Now, now we get to up our ante. This team behind me, these are people that didn't just accept a role or a position. These are people that have been doing this stuff for a long time on their own. One, one leadership principle is always appoint the people that are already doing it. These guys have been doing it. They have the ability not only to vet the opportunities, but to organize the efforts and to help us fund those efforts and to take people overseas. It's going to be amazing, and we want everyone to be a part of that. The good news is when you partner, even financially, you are taking a part that you are going to be rewarded for Whoever's doing the great works out there, I'm, I'm thinking of the gentleman that, that, uh, that Pastor Josh mentioned a while ago. Do you realize that you, as a church, funded a project that created a language, a written language for people that had no written language, had no word for God, had no way of understanding things, and not only did you create a language, you taught the people to read it, and you gave them the New Testament, the only book in that language that can be read in that country. Four million people heard the gospel. And 10 million more people are likely to because it was a core language for their language as well. Guys, it's amazing what a few people can do when they set their heart to obey God. I want you to stretch your hands toward this group today. These people, Jim and Lorna, been doing missions forever. Take their family across the pond to Africa and serve in, a, in an orphanage. Andy and Cherie been doing missions forever at home and abroad. They love taking teams. These folks are going to be forerunners. We're going to ask God to open the eyes of their understanding. We're going to ask God to give them favor. We're going to ask God to give them his vision. There's nothing more powerful than carrying God's vision. My vision, your vision doesn't get it. What does the Lord say? So, Father, I lay my hands on them today, and in thanksgiving, I pray that you'll give favor, creative vision, understanding of the cultures, discernment for those people that would ask us for help. God, we pray that you'd show us and lead us to people that are fire starters. We pray, God, that you'd give us favor in places where we have no reason to have favor. We pray, God, that you'd bring resources. Resources, God. People 
things, finances, whatever is necessary, God, to do what you want done in this coming generation. God, we're so thankful today for the opportunity that is ours. We bless you for it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yeah. Let's give it up for Pastor Gary. Yeah, and Judy, his family. We're standing on his shoulders today and everyone that's come before at Hope. Uh, we're gonna now switch to where we pray over some of the various countries and everything. One thing real quick, um, I used to work for a company that started small and grew really big. And the way we did it is we went into every market where there was a need and we found the best person in our business and we either hired them or bought their company. You know, and that allowed us to do it because they understood that market and the best way to get our product into there. Well, that's what we've done with our missions partners. We have tr found the best people and we evaluate them and partner with them so that we can do more quickly than we can individually. So I'm gonna start by praying for Africa. We're gonna start by praying for Ethiopia. And if you have been to an, even another country in Africa that's near and dear to your heart, pray for them too. Because as Pastor Josh said, we're gonna expand beyond what we're doing now. So we're gonna pray for Ethiopia right now. God, we thank you for uh, Dr. Gedehun Tasima and his wife, Tegas. God, we thank you for all they're doing through Bright Hope Ministries, God. We thank you for how they're uh, feeding kids, Lord, how they're training Bible uh, colleges to grow, Lord, and plant churches. Thank you for the evangelists they're training, God. Thank you, Lord, for the pastors they're training, God. Thank you, Lord, for the contacts they have in the government, Lord. We pray that you would keep those doors open, Lord. Keep the doors open so they can bring the gospel, Lord. Now we move to Zimbabwe, Lord, with Pastor Tom and Bonnie Duchelle. Thank you, Lord, for Celebration Ministries. Thank you for all you've done through them, God. We pray, Lord, that you continue to keep the doors open there, God, that you continue to give them strategies for how to reach this country, Lord. Lord. And God, we move now to Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo with Tresor. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to touch him, God. Lord, thank you for his humble servant's heart, God. We pray, Lord, that people would be moved away from tribal factions to just brotherhood and sisterhood in Christ, Lord. We love and praise you, Jesus. We ask you, God, for the rest of Africa, God, that we're not in today, but we know you're already there. We ask you, God, to move, God. Show us where to go. Show us where to invest our lives, God, to join you in reaching the people of Africa. In Jesus' name. Lord, we want to pray for the Verbatens. They are a couple that have come directly from our congregation, and you've sent them to Jerusalem, Israel. God, we lift them up today. We pray protection over them and their family, their girls. God, that you protect them. And as they in have integrated into their community, God, I pray that you would open up opportunities uh, for people to come into contact with them, for relationships to be built so that they can show the love of Jesus. God, as you are drawing uh, people in the end times back to Israel, back to the city of, of Jerusalem. God, I pray that you would let them come into contact with uh, Patrick and Rebecca. God, that you would show them the love of Jesus and that they would be able to have the real uh, revelation of who the Messiah is. Lord, we pray that Jesus would be seen in everything that they do and everything that they say. God, we just pray blessings over the verbatims today and everything that they put their hand upon. God, we just thank you for how you're using them, Lord. And God, we are going to shift to the local uh, organizations that we're our supporting here in our own town in Springfield, God. We pray for the organization of I Pour Life. Lord, we have uh, people in our congregation that are life coaches, people that attend here at Hope every Sunday. God, I pray that you would use them in a mighty way as they meet with foster uh, young adults on a daily basis, that they are, you have used this year to launch them into new uh, places, God, and we thank you that you are giving favor to those places. God, we thank you that you are opening up opportunities to meet with national and local and state leaders to give um, 
a way for this organization to prosper and to go forward, Lord. We pray that you would bring the right people, the right people to lead this organization, that you would bring the people that need to see it forward, Lord. I pray that you would bless Julie and Paul and Rita that are here with us today, that your hand of blessing would be upon them and that you would continue to prosper this organization here in our own city and the things that they are doing for our foster youth. Thank you, Lord. Lord, what an exciting time that we get to be a part of. You are doing so many strategic things and there are so many things to come as it relates to this hope community and the nations. I continue that, that prayer that Lorna started for so many amazing organizations here in our own backyard. We thank you for Pregnancy Care Center that we've been able to sow into for over two decades. Over 200,000 lives changed through that ministry. Women who have chosen life for their babies because of that ministry. I pray right now over Lisa McIntyre, the director, the, the head of Pregnancy Care Center, and I pray your wisdom and your strength over her. Lord, that you would protect her, that you would guide her, and that you would equip her even more. We thank you for Danae Faye on the leadership, one of our friends here at Hope even. And God, I pray that you would give her innovative thinking, that you would bless her tremendously, that she would grow in that organization, and that she would help PCC to impact so many more lives in this community and beyond. Lord, I thank you for Dogwood Ranch with Dana and Brian Lopez and just the cool, cool ministry they have for foster youth. Lord, I know so many lives have truly been impacted because of their ministry, because they've connected to your heart for your kids. And I pray your amazing blessings, financial blessings over Dogwood Ranch, that they would be able to continue to meet the needs of so many, Lord. And right now, God, I pray over the Americas from the most northern parts of Canada and Alaska all the way through down to the U.S. and to Central America, the Caribbean islands, and to South America. So many amazing nations, so many amazing sons and daughters, all the way down to the southernmost parts of Chile. Father, I thank you for North, Central, and South American nations. And right now, I pray for your fire to sweep through those nations. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would sweep through those nations, that revival would just swell up, that revival would happen in these nations, and that they would feel the fire of your presence, and so many would come to know you, Lord. I pray that the nations would be impacted. Lord, you've been doing so many amazing things in these nations, and I know that the best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing in these nations and for giving us the ability to sow, to join these ministries and to impact your sons and daughters. Yeah, we lift up the nation of Guatemala. Lord, we thank you that you are changing the narrative in that country. The narrative that has the third highest malnutrition rate now has a place in Monjas, Guatemala that has agriculture that's flourishing, that's providing for orphans and widows in a ways that doesn't even understand in the natural. And so God, I pray continued blessing over Shadow His Wings and the James Project. Lord, that you would continue to give favor to that country, to those people, Lord, that those orphans that are now finding a home and finding you through that, God, Lord, that they would go out to the people around them to be able to then multiply that to their country, to their nation, Lord. God, I pray over Brian and Tiffany Applegate and Mama Carol who served down there in Guatemala. Lord, I pray that you would lift their head today, that you would encourage them, that even though this season with COVID and everything else that has been so difficult, 
Lord, you've still proven faithful. You've still provided and you're still continuing to provide. And so God, I pray that you would do that for over those missionaries today, God, that you are changing the narrative of Guatemala a nation that is corrupt with leaders that are corrupt, but you are setting aside a place with your name, with your name that lives and is being proclaimed, that the kingdom of heaven is coming to earth in that place, Lord. We also pray over Cambodia, completely opposite side of the world. Lord, but your name is still being known there, Lord. God, we pray over these young women whose lives are being used for such horrible things, God. But we thank you that you've brought missionaries over there to rescue them, to save them. Lord, from everything from the SWAT teams that are going in to rescue these girls, to the homes that they're being put into to be restored. Lord, I pray through all of that, that they would be restored in their hearts, God, from the trauma and the things that they've experienced, Lord. God, but you're restoring. That's what you do. And Lord, I pray that you would restore these girls, God. Lord, even in the prevention and these boxing gyms that they have, that they actually minister to the traffickers. Lord, I pray that you would shift and change those hearts, Lord, that you would utilize those conversations that the missionaries are having with the people who are doing the trafficking and that there would be a shift and a change and that they would come to know you, Lord. We thank you, God, that your name is being glorified in the nations, Lord. We thank you that we get to be a part of that. Yeah, I want us to just lift our voices and pray for our missionary in Southeast Asia and for all that's going on. Could we lift our hands all over the room? And I just wanna pray Acts 4. We prayed this Wednesday night for quite a while. But this says, look upon their threats and grant boldness to proclaim the gospel with signs and wonders. So tonight, or this morning, I pray that, God, you would break in over the missionaries in Southeast Asia. I pray that you would break in over that whole region, over the believers, that even in the midst of great threats, God, that you would release boldness upon them in Jesus' name. Church, can we pray out loud together this morning for this? We ask for boldness. We ask for boldness to preach the word of God. In Jesus' name, we ask for all of the nations, God, that's, that are represented here specifically, that there would be a boldness in the proclaiming of Jesus Christ, that there would be a boldness in declaring the love of God in the midst of threat, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of threat. In Jesus' name, we ask for an advancing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ask for this in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Come on. We're going to sing this little chorus, and then we're going to pray over us as a church. And this is, this is such a powerful chorus for the sake of the world. Burn, the, burn like a fire in me. Yeah.
supporting God's going to give you intercession for nations there's going to be impact in the place of prayer God's going to open your heart to give in ways you would never give I believe some of us are going to actually physically go to different places but it's going to be by the spirit of the Lord so as you have your hand on them let's just pray that God would burn in our hearts for the nations for the great commission let's pray Lord, I thank you for the dreams that are coming forth from this room and online and in the Family Center. I thank you for the hearts that are going to change towards missions. I thank you that we're going to rearrange our earthly giving. And God, you're going to put on our heart to give amounts and give our time and give our energy and give our, our things, Lord, to better the kingdom of God outside of these walls and outside of the city. So move on our hearts today. Change our hearts today as a family, as a church as an organization here in Springfield, Missouri to change the world, God, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done not only through this building, but outside of this place in our hands and our giving and our work and sending. Lord, I pray right now for the hearts in this room and whoever is listening for the ones that are going. We are excited for you and we join with you and we know that God is turning and sharing and, and probing you to say yes. And so we champion you and cheer you on in your yes of reaching the nations. Yeah, yeah. in Jesus' name. And everybody said, <laughs> can we give the Lord a shout of praise together today? Yeah, man. We're closing this service, but I would like to invite our ministry team to come forward this morning. And maybe you're here and you need prayer for something. Maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus. We would love to pray with you this morning. I encourage you as you go, the offering, uh, what are those things called? Boxes <laughs> are uh, at the door up here in the front. Um, forgiving for missions. They, they'll say hope for the world. You can give there. Certainly give online and click on missions. Check out the hallway as you leave. But we'd love to pray with you if you desire prayer today. God bless you. Oh,